Hello, welcome to another episode of Trigwell's Tea. Today I'm here with singer-songwriter, playwriter, general Welsh person. General dog's body. Whatever Fibble you need, I can do Winter. it. Fibel is an up-and-coming singer-songwriter and as, you know, someone who's been up-and-coming for 10 years, mm -hmm. me. <laughs> welcome. <Yeah. laughs> and I'm going to be asking her some questions and she's going to be asking me some questions so that we can get to the root of... To the root of the problem. Yeah, the root of the problem. If you hear some scratchings happening, mm. Fivel has a small dog that resembles a rat. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's start with some of these questions. These are questions that we have collated from an independent adjudicator. What keeps you motivated to do what you do? Because I think I'm a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just... So it is literally pursuing a dream sort of thing? Yeah. But I think it's more, I'm doing it for myself now. I'm motivated because if I don't do it, I don't feel right without it. I'm nothing. <laughs> yeah, I can definitely understand that. If I listen to something really great, I think to myself, I think I could do something like that or I, I know I can do that. So I think mm. other people's music, other people's really good music, that's what keeps me motivated to keep on doing it. There's probably other musicians actually and people stepping up the game a bit, I think that's what motivates yeah. motivates me to push a bit harder. I used to be more motivated by what other people thought. Yeah. So I used yeah. to, like when I first started out it was like, oh I'm, I'm gonna work really hard at this because mm -hmm. I want to be at this level. The only reason I wanted to be at that level was to be able to say to someone I'm at that level. Which is really stupid, and now it's now it's definitely like like that. Like I'll yeah. I'll hear something and be like, that's really that's a really clever piece of music. I could I, I feel like I that. could do that. So yeah. then I go and write something and try and create something that I feel like is mm. good. I was always chasing those things. Yeah, like um, yeah, I, I need to do this. I need to do this to make myself feel better. I need to do yeah. that to make myself feel good or make myself feel like a proper musician. But now, I just need to do it for myself. I know I can do that. I've still got... There's life in the old dog yet. <laughs> the next question is, how do you write music? I, I pick up a guitar. Mm-hmm. A good start. Yeah. Play something. Mm-hmm. Random. Or I watch someone play a different instrument that I can't play. Yeah. And then I'm like, yeah. Mm, uh, whatever the idea is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you write something and you go, terrible. <laughs> Awful. <laughs> Yeah, if I start it's writing something and it doesn't feel good straight away, I'm like, suck it off. That's me. Yes. <laughs> yes. Do you use voice memos? I, I do, actually. Yeah. yeah, I do. Thank God we've got it. <laughs> because the amount of times I've been out, like, I could be having coffee and then all of a sudden some, like, a melody, it could be off a noise that somebody's made with, like, yeah. coffee cup, anything. It was just a tippity tap oh and I was like, <laughs> done. It can just give me a little idea. And that tiny little idea can turn into a full song. Or sometimes I have to sit there for six hours and... The starting point is the hardest point. Yeah. I feel like. So we just oh, yeah. we just wrote a song and it's called <laughs> We didn't have some sad name. I'm gonna say it's called Sad to See You Go. It's a sad, like emotional piano ballad. But the first what would you say, like maybe hour? Yeah. Was like probably the toughest part because we were just figuring out what our ideas were mm -hmm. and we had some ideas that didn't work and we had some ideas that did work and as well like we did decide on kind of of the title of it or the the theme to the song and I think that's really important to do for me it is sometimes like, yeah. I give I, sometimes I think of a song name before I write the song it, like narrows and, your focus yeah then, yeah then yeah. I can think about um for example like I wrote a Romeo and Juliet based song and what I did was I thought of all words that you know, that, that were um, themed towards that. Yeah. And then I kind of picked those words and put them in the song, mm. and it's such a good way to do it. Yeah, that's but, cool. Um, but it, I think it changes every time. Yeah, do you it think so? It's time. never the same. Sometimes there's like a, a certain formula in pop songs, mm. yeah. which is usually like first pre chorus, chorus, yeah. first pre chorus, chorus, yeah. middle eight chorus, which is fine and mm. works. I don't like thinking mm. of that in my head when mm, I'm writing because it's very. Restrictive. Yeah, definitely. I don't think I used to do that a lot. Well, like the way I come to it eventually is usually like that pop structure, mm -hmm. but I don't like to set it out for myself to do that because I think it's like it just makes your brain shut down a little bit. Uh, the other day I wrote three separate songs. All hits. All hits, all number one. Smash like, hits. Yeah. Number one for 10 weeks. Those kind of songs. Three of them. I took a verse from one of the songs, I took yeah. a chorus from another one, and I actually made 
a song from three songs. Because I just picked the best, but it's, it's weird, but it really worked. Have you ever okay. done that? That's cool. Yeah. This is Fox. Yeah. He's a small dog in the world. He's just snorting already. Yeah, he's grinning, isn't he? Yeah. We're twins, look. Just need to dye his hair blue. You know when someone like looks like the dog? Yeah, look. How do you do music full time? This is a question that I've actually had of loads of people. Yeah. Um, and I think just from the like the logistic side of things, how do people transition from doing like um, a job of any kind, mm -hmm. just in terms of like paying the bills, you know, oh, yeah. to becoming full time? musician. Most of the full-time musicians that I know do like a lot of session work or a lot of um, like private performance booking type things for events like weddings or anything like that, parties and stuff like that. Doing session playing for other acts on the side of like a part-time mm. job is probably mm. the easiest way to make it become a full-time yeah. thing because there's there's like a, a period of time when you're like transitioning between all of your money is coming from like making music mm -hmm. and none of it is and it's hard to, it is mm -hmm. hard to like get from one to the other yeah but there are ways to do it it's not impossible no sure. no it's definitely not i've been I, I decided a while ago i left my job that i had a daytime job and i thought you know what i'm just gonna try and make music my full-time job yeah and i've never done that before just done music and nothing else and so I joined a cover band. Is this band. after the science thing? Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. after my science teacher job. In a children's play centre. <laughs> Not a real one. But now I'm in a covers band, yeah. full covers band, and I'm in a, an acoustic double act as well. And also things like even busking and stuff like that as well. Yeah. Like, I, I think I'm lucky to have that. Because I always think I could probably go anywhere in the world and make enough money yeah. to buy dinner. Busking is really good generally, like... Passenger still goes out busking. Yeah. Yeah. Like no way, before his no shows and stuff, and pulls massive crowds in. No and, way. And it's a cool experience for everyone, obviously, but like, mm. good for him as well. I think it's good for that. you. I really do. And you know what? People, people use it as like to rehearse and get some confidence, or because when I think before I used to busk, how often did I sing in front of people? It wasn't very often at all. Yeah. I'd be singing on my own. Yeah. You know, at home and, and or rehearsing for that one gig. And, yeah. yes. and when you get there, you're too nervous because you're not used to singing in front oh, of people yeah, like that. Yeah. Of it, yeah. But literally, when you're, when you're sat, when you're busking, how many people? It's just like it's the strangers watching you. You've got to have some confidence. Or you have to have some balls, don't you? Yeah. To like just plug in and I feel start like you get that like street. instant hit of. Oh, nobody actually cares. Yeah. Which <laughs> yeah. feels like, initially feels horrible. Mm. But then, like, once you get one, if you can get, like, one person to yeah. stop it, it's the best it feeling. Really is. I know quite a few sort of singer songwriter, up and coming types mm. that won't busk mm. because they feel like there's a perception that it, it's not, what's the right word? It's not like a good look almost oh, right, okay. to do it. Oh yeah. Have you oh, met really? anyone like that? I suppose, yeah. But it's yeah. almost like below them to do it. Yeah, yeah. Almost. It must be it that must be a feeling that most people have because they yeah. don't do it. Because actually you yeah. don't see many mus musicians. Even in Liverpool, you kind of see the same people do it. It's scary though, isn't it? It is, it is scary. scary when you first yeah. start and do and it. And so many people have said to me actually, other musicians say, Oh, I couldn't busk, I couldn't busk. But you could go yeah. in front of a, a, an audience in a, in a you know, at a gig and you could do it. Yeah. But why why is it what so what's so scary about singing on the street is it because it's that weird feeling i i just imagine myself sometimes just walking along with my shopping and then just stopping and just started singing at the top of my voice that's how it feels sometimes <laughs> isn't it it's yeah. like putting your shopping down and just started having a song and everybody's like what yeah. the hell? but when you watch other buskers you yeah. don't never think that you know they're there you know they're, yeah. they're musicians i i th i think it's i um I think it's a really good thing to do. I think everybody should give it a go. Yeah. I think people care like too much about what other people think. If you're mm. walking down the street and you do anything slightly out of the ordinary, yeah. genuinely nobody cares. Like, no. Most people are thinking about how how they are coming across. Yeah. Like anybody who, who's starting, um, you know, wanting to be a musician and it's the first time of kind of singing in front of anyone, I would always suggest actually go busking rather yeah. than play a gig, yeah. go and busk because you, you can sing a song and you know, see how you can get halfway yeah. through a song and then change your mind if you don't want to carry yeah. on. <laughs> you, nobody's paying to see you, yeah. But as a musician, you know, I'm I've accepted that 
as long as I've got enough money to kind of get by, mm. then that's good enough for me. That is, that's the kind yeah. of, uh, you know, if you, if you're a full-time musician, you have to, you have to remember that as well. Yeah. Like, let's say that you're, you're just like, you're making songs at home, you're putting them out on mm. Spotify and stuff like that. One of them gets some kind of crazy support from radio out of the blue. You st you don't see like those royalties for so long. No. And even when you do, it's like a, a lump sum yeah. in like one quarter of a year. Mm -hmm. Managing that not having like a set monthly Yeah, thing that's it, yeah. Never knowing. Can be tricky. Yeah, yeah. because I've, I have that a lot. Like I don't, each week is different, you know? Yeah. Each week is different for me. It's good to have the busking because yeah, you do ever totally. need it. It really is. It's it. Or oh, maybe it's just a security thing. I know it's there. I know I can go busking. Yeah. I haven't been busking for years and I really miss it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I, the last time I was busking was like a couple of years ago in Chester and it was genuinely like really good fun. Was it? There's like a little sort of crossroads, isn't there? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's why I used to stand. This is years ago now. What do mm. you have to sacrifice to do what you do? Oh, where do we start? <laughs> Sanity. Happiness. <laughs> Sanity. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, Money. No, I'm the yeah, like, like, <laughs> for, for me, it's most of the sacrifice comes from like social life stuff. Mm. Particularly if, if you if you're on tour or you're away or you've got even if you're at home and you've got like a project that you need to finish. If you miss like a particular social event or a big social occasion or yeah someone's birthday or someone's wedding or, you know, a friend's bar mitzvah or whatever it might be. <laughs> yeah. You just, you feel awful. There's two sides of it, because you feel bad because you're not there, yeah. but you also feel, like, guilty because you think that they're thinking you're not here yeah. for this. <laughs> and it's just horrible. <laughs> You're riddled with guilt. I'm riddled with guilt. Is? Yeah, so ta like that part That's of touring it. for me is tricky. In terms of like other sacrifice stuff. No, do you know what? Like <laughs> most of it is like financial, really. Yeah, that's definitely what it is. That that is the main thing. Yeah, I know it's like yeah. bad to say, but that is. I don't. It's not bad. It's just. It's. It's just. Um, honest, isn't it? Yeah. It's like anyone with a small business. Like you're spending money to make things and even if you're at home recording something at home, producing something at home, you've still got to buy the equipment to do that mm -hmm. and pay your electricity bill when everything's hooked yeah, up no. to <laughs> There are a lot of outgoings and that means that you don't buy other things. Like I'm not particularly bothered about like getting a really flash car and no, stuff yeah, like that. Too. Yeah. But I think if I was, I'd find that really difficult because I'd rather like slog my guts out yeah. until I'm absolutely exhausted and depleted of all money so just right. to get the creativity out <laughs> Me too, completely. Which is a disease. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, well, it's a curse, isn't it? It is, it really is. That's yeah. the thing, like, what are you sacrificing? Basically, I, but then I, it's not a sacrifice because I would always choose it. I would always choose, I'd rather have, I'd rather have less money and mm. more creative time. It's an addiction, so I'm addicted to music mm. and I'm addicted to creating things, so I would always choose it over yeah. anything else. Things like expensive cars and things like all that, that they, they don't mean anything to me because it's music yeah. that makes me happy, so... Well, I say Which makes is me why, happy. like, yeah, it, makes, <laughs> it does make us happy, but, yeah. like, that's part of the reason why I've probably been wearing the same clothes for the last <laughs> three years. A lot goes into the music, definitely. Even, even just, like, financially, but also, like, brain power as well. Oh, you yeah. can completely drain your brain of any energy. Definitely. And, and then, then you've got nothing to give to anybody else. Yeah. At the end of the day, which is I've got no words. They've all gone yeah. on paper. Sorry, I'm spent. I which is not that. ideal, is it for for anybody else? For anybody. Next question: How do you feel about the music industry now compared to how it was five years ago? It's weird, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's really weird. I don't even know what's going on. Does anybody know what's going on? <laughs> it's improved and it's. Um, it, it's faced some troubles, mm. yes. There doesn't seem to be any set rules anymore. You could put a, a song on SoundCloud and you could you could just explode, be massive. It's not the way it used to be. Like, the way it used to be, you'd be found in a bar and some manager would put everything into you. You'd start from nothing, from scratch, from no fans, no nothing. But now, obviously, you've got to have all that before you have a management company. Yeah. Or before anybody is interested. So people have got to be interested 
before that's, anybody's done That's it. the thing. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of pressure on the artist now to basically have the whole game sorted before somebody like a label or a manager or a publisher or anyone um, invests time and money into them, which it's, it's weird because I feel like now more than ever it's easier to do that, but it's also harder because there's so many people that are able to do it. Yeah. Oh, so like it's easier than ever to make your own music video, for example. Yeah. Or, um, and to release your music. Yeah, and to release yeah. your music. It Like the access is just... We, yeah, it's you great. can just do it, can't you? Yeah, um, I can I can write a song in this room, record it myself, and then somebody in Australia could be listening yeah. to it next week. I love that side of it though. That's my favourite side of, of like the, the change that's happened. Yeah. Is that I can get music to anybody in the world and I can record it myself yeah. through good technology that I've got. But then there's twenty thousand songs a day uploaded mm. to Spotify now. Oh, so it's like there? So I feel like it's good because it's easier than ever for people to do it independently, but it's also bad because there's more... There's more crap than there's ever before. Crap. There is. There like, is. There's, there's some amazing, amazing music out there mm -hmm. and some like groundbreaking music out there, but there's also more bad stuff. More, yeah. Because they're listening like, to try and find the, the new good stuff each yeah. week. I find that difficult. Yeah, so do I. Um, and when I do hear something good, I want to know who it is, yeah. and I go and listen to all of their stuff because it's yeah. not very often that you come across something yeah, that's, that's so good. So I always make sure I go and have a good look. Yeah. So tell them about your story. You're like, well, I can <laughs> keep, it, keep it short. Put the kettle on. Yeah, years ago when I was 19, so about 50 years ago, <laughs> I went to an audition in London. I got into this band. We had a, ma a massive management company behind us and it was all going swell. We were an all-girl rock band and just before we signed a deal another all-girl rock band got released and they didn't do very well which meant that our record company decided not to sign us. But you'd uh, just been told by everyone really hadn't you that it was yeah, like you were gonna be deal. massive, it was, gonna be it huge. was, yeah. Girl you're gonna make it, <laughs> gonna make it big. So I was walking around thinking Mm -hmm. get a load of this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was happy. I was like, this has finally happened. Basically to have it given to you for, I think it was like three or four years we were in this band. Yeah. Everything's thrown at you. About to sign and then for it all to get taken away, it was very hard. And then obviously since then, things have changed like so much. Yeah. Oh my God, like things are nothing Did like you, it was Had there. that band had like, a single or an album out before the management got involved? Or was it sort of... No, this was something that a management company kind of put together. They, they kind of okay. auditioned all, all these different girls, the best musicians that they can for this for this, for this you know, really kick-ass band. Okay. Like, this is going to be a big band. Kind of like, you know, like, um, it was we were called Cherry Bombs, so it was based on the Runaways, so I was going to be the Joan Jett of the band, you know. The awesome. coolest one. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously. obviously. We recorded a lot, we went to the studios and all this business. But again, that's something that doesn't seem to happen now either. Back mm. in the day, people, management companies were like looking for the best people and putting them together and making great bands, right? This yeah. is what used to happen. I don't think people used to talk about it that much. I don't think we ever would have come out and said that's how we would have been put together. Because right. it was not, you know, cool. it's just like kind of yeah, manufactured. Yeah. But I don't think yeah. it's a bad way to get musicians from all over the country, the best ones, and then put those people together and say, have a, see what Especially you can do. Especially if they work, because you, you guys yeah. had chemistry as well, didn't you? Oh, so definitely, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, yeah, if, when it works, like, it, yeah. that's the best thing you can do, is get, get the best people. So, yeah, that was quite hard. I've never experienced anything like that. No. Which mm -hmm. I, I think it would be really interesting to have experienced that, but my mm -hmm. experience of music has always been like, I can do music independently, I'm making music that I want to make. That's I'm all that matters, right? Then I think so, so as well. You, yeah. you, you are, that's that's the thing. Like you get to a point where you think, well, I'm actually doing it because I love it, yeah. not because I, I don't really care what anybody else thinks. I don't. Yeah. I don't actually care. You've got to get to that point where you don't care because actually, then you start making the best music. That's well. that's so true. That's true. Yeah. Right? Once you start, once you start watching what other people are doing less, yeah. and once you just focus on your stuff, mm -hmm. it's, it becomes better. Yeah. Because I yeah. used to. I I remember I used to look at the charts and be like, oh, what are people listening to now? And try and yeah. kind of. But who yeah. cares? As long as you're happy and you're proud of what you do, that's another thing. I think you need to be proud of what you're doing. And somebody will always. People will always like it. If it means something to you, it's going to mean something to somebody else. I think. From 
the experience that most of my friends seem to have had if they're in a band or if they're a solo act or whatever and they've signed to a major or done something like that mm -hmm. um, it's been a case of the major label is looking mm -hmm. at how they're doing right yeah and and saying like yeah that's a really good song mm -hmm. send us some more songs right, send yeah. us some more songs and it's and sort of wanting them to put their career on hold yeah and send them music to see if they write like a hit song or right, something yeah, that, they, they, that they feel like could have yeah. legs i'm trying not to name names but those people are then putting their career on hold mm. waiting for somebody to say yeah that's, that's a cool good. song and and then time goes by and they haven't released any music for three years exactly so and you've forgotten about yeah people yeah definitely and you, then you've lost part of yourself as well you're like yeah. isn't it but that's why mm. being able to do music independently is so important i think yeah. i definitely have nothing against like major labels and working with major labels mm -hmm. But the fact that you can do music independently now is just so important because it was it used to be like oh, major label or bust. Oh, that like, exactly that that was all I yeah. cared about years ago. And fi I'm finding it hard to get out of that mentality though because yeah. you do right because it takes yeah. you a while to realise that oh hang on a minute I don't really have to worry about that I can I can you know you can create your own fan base. I have people like say from all these different countries listen to my music. I've never even been to these countries and there's somebody sat there. Listen to a song I've written in my pajamas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, how weird is that? Yeah. How lucky is that? Well, that's that's good, and that's, that's good enough cool. for me. Sometimes, when you think of it, as long as you've got people who are enjoying what you do and yeah. you're happy, that's all that matters. I um, do think the the cream eventually rises to the top. I do still believe that. Yeah. You might be foolish to believe that, but I do yeah. think like if there's <laughs> a like good song, believe. if there's a good song, mm. no matter who's written it no matter what support they're getting from various people, yeah. if it's a good song, yeah. it will get traction. Yeah. I suppose you see that sometimes, you know, when you, when you think of all the, like, the one-hit wonders. Mm. Well, there's a reason that it's because it's such a great song. Yeah. People say one-hit wonder as if it's like a, I an know. insult. I'd love to like, be a one-hit wonder. They've had Please. a massive hit. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, it's been great to chat. And I look like I'm stroking something but you can't say what I'm stroking, so that's weird. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> well, it was good to chat. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks very much for being a special guest on no Triple C. Anytime. And um, yeah, as a signing off note, we are both independent musicians, so we don't get outside investment or support really from anybody from else. From anyone at all. <laughs> but we're doing it and it is possible and it's a thing that you can do. If you are a creative person, please feel like you've got the freedom because you have because the mm -hmm. internet's made it possible to pursue your creative dreams yeah. i know that sounds really cheesy yeah. but it's true it's, go and um, do it what have you got to lose yeah it's fulfilling as well to to yeah. do something that you actually want to do and a lot of my friends who have got like part-time jobs and they're doing music on the side it doesn't make you any less of a musician than a full-time musician. If you're a musician or you're an artist or whatever it is that you actually want to do, but you're doing it as a part-time thing, you're doing it, like, yeah. fair play. I think it's kind of more stressful if you've got multiple jobs and you're pursuing whatever your creative dream might be. I think that's like, I'm like, damn, I respect that. Yeah, I agree. You're slogging your guts out to do that. That's yeah. very cool. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Trigwell's Tea. I want to say a huge thanks to people who are supporting me on Patreon. You are literally supporting the creation of new music and I'm very, very grateful for that. And if you want to check out Viable Winter's music, which you definitely should, I'll pop mm. the links below. And mm -hmm. um, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Hey girl, hey! <laughs> <laughs> See you later. <laughs> That's the worst thing I've ever done.